What's going on, you guys? It's your boy 360 in this thing. Um, I'm in Austin right now. We just came from Nationals. Um, I, I'm posting my deck list right now. What I'm going to show you guys is just how to combo with really awkward hands. This is probably the grossest two card combo this deck has with like the brickiest bricks. I'm going to show you guys how this can end you on practically full board. Um, with a little bit of finesse, you can make a lot of hands work with this deck. I'm in a coffee shop right now, that's why the background's so loud. Um, this combo I stumbled upon by accident just now because what I was doing was taking the worst hands I could find. And I was thinking like, what happens if I get hand traps? So I'm going to show you guys two really bad combos. And like, how they work anyways. So, I'm going to show you guys how Chaos Summoning Beast and the Grave Squirmer um, ends you on Rage and Grave plus Caesar and Phantom with follow-up. Um, so let's start by Normal Summoning Chaos Summoning Beast. Special Grave Squirmer through its effect. This combo does require you to burn his effect early, so it's kind of unfortunate, but it's just playing with the bad hand anyways. You're going to make Moon of the Close Heaven, link it off. You're going to make Requiem and then Tribute Requiem. You're going to use this effect to summon Engraver, activate Requiem from Grave, equip it to Engraver, Contact Fusion, make Necro Equip Princess. Um, you're going to activate Engraver to specifically put back Moon of the Close Heaven, not the Requiem. You actually um, need the Moon of the Close Heaven again. Um, and then you're going to summon him out. Then you're going to Link Summon. This combo's clean. First I ended on Opelousa, Phantom plus Rage, but I found out how to end on Caesar with the same combo. I'll show you guys both lines. You just pivot based on your matchup. Sometimes is better, but I think Caesar is just better, especially playing into like Timpai and Snake Eye. It's a lot easier for them to check an Opelousa than it is to check a Caesar. Um, so we're going to make Sequence, we're going to use his effect to Fuse. We're going to put back the um, Chaos Beast and the Necro Equip Princess. And you're going to summon out Aerial Eater and use Aerial Eater's effect to dump... Actually, I have the pile of cards that we need right here. Dump our... Oh, Semsar. I didn't grab a Semsar D Lotus off the deck. There we go. Dump the Semsar D Lotus. From here, you're going to Squirmer back the Lotus and tribute the Lotus for cost. And Special Owl Spirit and activate Spirit. And you're going to set the Nightmare Pain. You haven't searched this entire combo. So this is a two-card clunky combo that's clean into Droll, very clean into Droll. Um, and then from here, you're going to go ahead and make your Yama. Yama into Shavara, just in case. Sometimes people be holding him for game two, so you never know. After Shavara. And we're going to activate the Nightmare Pain, and we're going to use the Nightmare Pain. Pop the Spirit, and we're going to add Chronicle for this combo. Um, new Chain Spirit, Effect 7, the OG. Okay, activate Chronicle. Um, what we're going to do here is link these off into Rage. So there's your Rage. Then you're going to put back the U-Bell and the Semsara D Lotus. Summon out. Um, what I don't know, when I'm like blind playing blindly, um, I like to summon Phantom in defense, even though Nightmare Pain is cool. Um, you do this for a reason, because you can always summon out OG in a tie position when you know the matchup. But if it's Tenpai, like this card's better in defense than it is in attack because of Lightning Storm. And like Lightning Storm hitting Nightmare Pain is one thing, but Nightmare Pain hitting this so that, I mean, Lightning Storm hitting this so that Nightmare Pain doesn't even do anything is another thing. So you summon in defense to respect Tenpai. Um, this gets a counter. Um, trying to remember here what we do next. Next we Shavara target the Rage. Pop the Rage with Shavara. Trigger Rage and Yama. Chain Link 2 is going to be Yama. Chain Link 1, Rage is targeting the Engraver to add to hand. And then Yama is going to bring back the Spirit of Ubel. And then it's also going to pop it on resolution because Yama also can optionally destroy card you control. So you're gonna trigger your spirit to summon out the OG Yubel. So Mature Chronicle should have three counters now. Okay. And then from here, we are going to link these off into Moon of the Close Sky. Activating Graver, because you haven't done that yet. And then you're gonna add the Tract. And activate the Tract, add Lori, discard Lori. 
effect of Lord is special summon itself. Uh, don't forget your Shavar to set the chamber. Um, and from here, you can actually use the Mature Chronicle to bring back OG Bell and link these all off into a 3-mat Opelousa. Um, I think it's a little redundant, um, so I think that this combo is cleaner if you go Trapped and fuse off the Lori and the Moon of the Cold Sky instead of making the 3-mat Opelousa. And you're going to make Lacrimosa, I mean Lacrima, and then use its effect to actually bring back the Engraver. I make the, I'm telling you guys, we'll make combos are the best. Um, so now we're going to overlay into our Caesar. And we'll summon Caesar in defense as well. Respect Lightning Storm. Um, identify what you lose to and play around it. And then we're going to activate the Mature Chronicle. Um, you can bring back OG Bell. That's totally fine. What I'm going to do is just take the Banished Tract for follow-up. Um, and this guy was already used. So he's actually not in the hand. So your ending board, you have follow-up off Mature Chronicle, Nightmare Pain, and the Fiendsmith track. Your interactions are Phantom on your opponent's turn, the Floodgate that Nightmare Pain is, the Double Caesar, and the Rage and Grave. And remember this combo started off with Grave Squirmer and Chaos Beckoning Beast. So arguably two bricks, and Squirmer feels like a brick when it's not being able to like be paired with another good card. So this is a really good inboard. The same inboard, you could just remove a counter for Mature, summon OG Bell, and take the Lori and the Moon of the Close Guy, and take all those and make a 3-mat Opelousa. So you get in on Opelousa, Phantom with Rage and Grave, either or. I think Rage is just better, especially into the um, the um, Tenpai Field Spell. The Tenpai Field Spell is going to get, um, Opelousa is going to get checked by that, but Caesar works under the Field Spell because it hits Chandra in hand, it hits Genroku in hand, and it hits the um, Sangen Summoning. So I think Caesar's better, and the follow-up with Tract is better too. And on your next turn, you can put all your resources back and start playing again. Um, the other combo is a two-card combo with a really awkward hand. Um, awkward in the sense that like if it gets hand trapped, it really isn't going to work the way you want to, but you can still make it happen. And it's going to be through a single infinite impermanence. It's going to be Beast plus Grave Squirmer. Very, very similar. Very similar. In fact, arguably Beast plus Squirmer through an imperm is the same exact combo as the first one. Um, so if you normal beast and this gets impermanenced, which is correct because it cuts you off of three bodies, you can just summon this and you can do the exact same thing that I just showed you guys. Literally, this combo is the same as because this when this card gets imperm, it's the same thing as KS um, summoning beast. So like, actually I don't even think I need to show you the combo because it's the same exact combo. Um, so you can end on the three map plus the Phantom and the Rage and Grave, or you can end on Caesar plus the Phantom with the Rage and Grave. Caesar's better if you ask me. Caesar can be beat rice if you want to summon on Beatrice, that's fine. Um, I will show you guys how to beat two effect negation base hand traps, which can be Valor Mourner, Imperm Valor, or Imperm uh, Mourner. And it's going to be with Nightmare Throne and Gates. Um, it's us actually. This is the best two-card combo in the deck. I could show you guys what happens with this. So like, it's almost sometimes better to open with the beast because it always gets imperm. Sometimes it's debatable whether you imperm the beast with the gates up, but it still cuts you off of the additional bodies. And a lot of people don't play Almirage, so imperming beast is actually still correct with the gates up because they don't have Almirage, so this actually doesn't do anything. Um, so I'll show you guys gates plus the throne. So you activate gates at the beast normally, it gets impermed. You're gonna activate the nightmare throne. Pop Spirit and then summon OG Bell. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make Yama here. And the reason why Yama has to get checked by an impermanence as well is because if you don't imperm Valor or Mourner the Yama, then it's gonna add Shavara and Shavara in hand is gonna play through the imperm Valor or Mourner on anything else. So you have to imperm here. So that's already two effect negation hand traps being used. Um, and then you take these, these two specifically, contact fuse. You make Phantom, and then you discard the random card you have in hand, and you bring back Spirit, and use her effect, and you're gonna grab your Nightmare Pain, and this is full combo from here. Uh, through two effect, so two card combo that beats two effect negation hand traps, and they're they're on the correct points as well. Um, so you're gonna go Nightmare Pain. Um, I think you could make like put the Yama in Grave and be greedy if you want to, but like. 
this is safe right here, so like Phantom is gonna check the third hand trap. So you're gonna know Nightmare Pain, Pop Spirit. And you're gonna grab Squirm. Um, chain Link 1 Field Spell, Chain Link 2 Spirit. Summon out OG, and then you're gonna summon out uh, Terra Incarnate, wherever it's at. Um, oh, it's in this pile. There we go. So Squirmer's in hand. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is actually take all of these, and I'm thinking here. Yeah, you squirm here actually. Squirm here. Take all of these. You're gonna make a. I'm sorry. Take these. Leave Terror up. And make a three mat. Okay. <clears throat> Think in here. And then you're going to squirm the spirit back. Take these. Link them off, and you're gonna go full Fiend Smith combo with the Opalus and the Phantom up. Um, you could debate also if you don't want the three mat, um, because you can make the rank ten or the three mat. The three mat plus the Phantom just insulates the last hand traps. So you'd better be safe than sorry. Um, so you're gonna full Fiend Smith combo. What this is gonna just end you on is another a Caesar. Um, so you end on Caesar Opalus plus Phantom. I can show you guys also how you make the rank 10. So if we go back to this point right here, where we currently are with Terra Incarnate, Graven Squirmer in hand. Um, if you don't want the Opelousa, you can still summon the Squirmer, and you can take these right here. And you can link these off into the Moon of the Cold Sky. This is debatably better, and you can Squirm the Spirit. Overlay these into the rank 10, Barudris, and you can just combo here. It's pick your poison. Uh, there's no correct or incorrect. It's always going to be predicated to the matchup and the knowledge that you've been able to garner just from your opponent's, what you can actually um, telegraph from your opponent's plays. And if this is game one, then like this is probably still safer than all, especially um, playing into the Timpai matchup. So Requiem here. Summon the Engraver. Um, you have the extra body, so you don't have to do the Necro Equip line. Um, so you're going to take this. We're going to go here. And we're going to make where Sequence at. Sequence. And then we're going to go Sequence Effect. Put these two back. Make Lacrima. And we're going to go Lacrima Effect. At this, discard it. Then we're gonna go for tract here. Activate the tract at the lorry, discard the lorry. As soon as we find the lorry, there she is. Uh, mandatory lorry, you know, summon itself back. Um, from here, we can take these two. And since you're not actually going to be making um, the SP into the, the like the Rage in the SP because you're cut off of your Yama, um, your Shavara off of Yama, you're going to take the Sequence and the Lori and you're going to make SP here. And then you're going to shuffle back the Lori, or the Sequence actually is probably better. And you're going to use um, the effect of Engraver, summon itself back, and you're going to end on a Caesar. So through two effect negation based hand traps, this is definitely better than the Opalus support, I think. So this is the line that you should take. You're ending on Caesar, Phantom, um, Varudris, and SP through double Imperm or double effect negation hand trap. And again, you do want to make the SP because you're not going to be able to make it on your opponent's turn because you don't have rage access because you got cut off of it via Yama. And of course you can take Yama plus another body to make rage anyways. But I think if you're playing into the Timpai matchup specifically, and also playing into the Snake Eye matchup, this is a lot cleaner. Um, this is better coverage into Board Breakers as well. So, yeah. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't do drugs. Don't your brain cells. Be safe.